So you want night vision? Yeah, we all do. You don't want to pay the extortionate price? You've got a mobile phone in your pocket. Why not use it for night vision? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that all for about £100. Yeah, keep watching. I'll show you how to do it. Hey YouTubers, it's Steve here aka Catanoni and welcome to another Ergonology video. On this channel we do a whole load of air rifles, air pistols and technology reviews. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and also check out the video links down below in the description. Um, in there I'll leave you um, images and where to get stuff from and also a link to our Facebook group. But everything I'm about to show you is listed down there. So if you want to do this, Take a look down there, there's all the links to Amazon in there where you can get all the bits you need to do this. So anyway, as I said in the intro, what I've got here is a night vision DIY setup system. Yeah, and this is utilizing my mobile phone, your smartphone that everybody has in your pocket, yeah. So we all know that night vision can get quite expensive. You can get things like the ATN or the Photons, which um, I've done reviews, um, check out my all my reviews on those. They're all in one unit, so they're great, they're excellent. But then you can also do the DIY side of things, um, where you actually end up buying a separate screen, batteries, you buy cameras, you attach them all up to your scope, and that works out usually around the 200 pound mark, maybe 300 pound mark, depending on how much you go into it. But you've got to think about that, though. a lot of those are doing is using analog cameras, you know, with those yellow, white, and red plastic um, connectors out, and you need external batteries, and then if you want to record, you've got to put a PVR recorder into there, it gets quite complicated and quite expensive. However, if you think about it, what have we all got in our pockets? Yeah, we've all got a smartphone nowadays. Well, what does a smartphone do? Well, it's a battery, so it can power a camera, yeah? It's also a screen, a touch screen at that, so you can get more functionality out of it. But also, more importantly, it will record as well. You can record all your movies directly onto your phone. So, why hasn't anyone done that? Well, they have now. We've got the ability to do it, and this is what I've got set up here on my Daystate Wed Roof. Um, I've got it actually mounted onto an MTC Cobra F1 first focal plane scope, because I want to set it up like this. But um, it works. I've done it. I've played with it. So what I'm going to show you is how to do this. Um, and like I said before, check down below in the video description, because I will leave you all of the links to the bits that you need to buy to put this all together. Now, obviously, you're only going to really want to attempt this if you're confident with putting things together, playing, um, obviously, and your mileage will depend on how well you do it and um, how well you set it all up. But um, I've managed to get this working and working quite nice. So how's it all working? Well, it's really split into, I'd say, realistically, sort of like three or four major components. The first part is getting a mounting system for your camera, which you can see here. And I'm just gonna take this off, and there it is. There's a mounting system using some plastic tubing that you can get readily available from Amazon or B&Q or other DIY shops. That basically goes over your scope like so. Then what you've got to do then is you've got to get a system actually on how to get your mobile phone onto your actual scope. So I've got a system here. There's plenty of ways of doing it. Well, this is the way that I've done it and I'll show you how that works. And your mobile phone goes on there. You then got to connect it all up which is another system in there. And then there's a software on your mobile phone, which is, you can get with an app. And then of course you're gonna need an IR source, which is a torch, which you may have already. But that's the major components of it all, how it all fits, how it all breaks down and how you fit it all together. The beauty of this obviously is you can put it all onto any scope. You can use your scope, daytime, nighttime. Um, basically you can just take it off, take the, the torch, take off the quick clamp here that's holding the mobile phone on and you're back to daytime usage and then Throw it on there, a couple of minutes of setting it all up and you're good to go. Your mobile phone does all of the recording, it powers the camera as well, so there's no external batteries or anything that you need, you can cord, you can use all the smart features on your phone. Really, really great little system and cheap as chips really when you think about it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna break down to the usual tabletop mode and I'm gonna go through how this thing's all put together, how you do it all. I'll talk through each of the bits, I'll leave some pictures for you and um, links for each of these. Like I said, check down below in the video description and we'll see how we get on and I'll come back after we've done that bit and give you my thoughts on this. 
Okay, so we're in tabletop mode. I'm just going to walk you through, like I said, the major components. What we've got up here is um, an IR source. This is a T20 um, IR torch. We then have a method of holding your mobile phone onto your actual scope. And then we actually have the camera and the mounting system with the cable connecting it all up. So I'm going to walk through each of these individually. Like I said, down below in the video description, there is all the links to Amazon where you can get all of these. But you can, if you want, go and try and find them elsewhere. Um, and I'll let you know where you can probably get them cheaper, especially when we talk about mounting the camera on here. But let's talk about the IR torch first. All I'm going to do is I've got this on a quick release. And I'm just going to take the IR torch off uh, so that we can take a look at that. Because obviously you can't have infrared without the IR torch. So let's just um, reposition that here. And there's the IR torch. I'll leave pictures around. But this is a T20 uh, by Unique Fire. It is about £30 on Amazon. Um, and I've actually got the optional um, for an extra, I think it was £12, an extra cap on the end of it, which basically allows you to have a remote switch or what's commonly called a rat tail, which means that you can control this by pressing a switch without having to go to the back of the torch. Very, very nice little torch. Runs on a standard 18650 battery, which is not supplied, so you need to get one of those. Really good torch, recommended. I use them a lot. Uh, so that's your IR source, nice and easy. Okay, so the next part that you need is you need to get, somehow you need to get your mobile phone onto your actual, uh, onto your scope. Now to do that, I've actually used a G-clamp. Um, and again, I'll leave all pictures for these, but I've used a G-clamp that I use quite a lot in my photography side of things for mounting cameras. Um, quite simple, the G-clamp is here. Um, again, I'll leave links for this around for you so you can see, uh, but you basically, that sits quite nicely over most scopes, up to 30 mil, no problems at all. It's got a nice little handle, so it's easy to put on, twist it around in the way that you want. And that just slots on nice and simple. Now, on the top of this G-clamp, there is, if I just take this all apart for you and show you, there is actually a standard um, a tripod um, adapter on here. So basically all I've done is I've just put a standard screw. Um, I'll leave links again for the screws and the locking nut on there and that allows me to attach a unit. Now I've opted for one of these units. Um, now this is a selfie, the top of a selfie stick. And again, I'll leave links for this, but the nice thing about that is it has that adapter screw in there, the standard fitting. Um, so basically I've taken that off um, and I've got myself um, a screw on here with a locking nut and that allows me to attach that onto there like so. Um, so that's how I get my phone uh, mounted onto my camera. There is another option that you can buy a different mount, which I'll leave a picture for you now that you can use. You can try that option out. Um, it has the same adapter on here, but you'll need to get the screw again to put it onto the G-clamp. Um, but I'll leave pictures and I'll leave a link for that if you want to try that out. So that's the easy part. That's getting your, your camera, uh, camera, your mobile phone, actually onto your scope. There are probably better ways of doing it. Um, this doesn't have any tilt adjustment or anything, but I'm sure you can work out how to do it. But it's one way, easy way to get you going. So that's that part out of the way. Obviously, you're going to need a mobile phone. So any smartphone will do this, anything that's at least a couple of years old. I know this definitely works on Android. I've done it on an S6, a Galaxy S6, an S7, an S8, and I'm sure it works on the latest ones as well. Um, and it might, I've not personally tried it, but it might work uh, for you on a um, iPhone as well. Um, I personally have not tried that because I'm not an iPhone user. But you need a mobile phone, smartphone, and basically that sits then on top of your scope. This acts as your battery source, it acts as your screen, touch screen as well, and it also um, allows you then um, with that to actually start using pinch and zoom recording facilities. Now I'm just gonna switch my phone on and what you need is a piece of software called USB cam camera. Now you can get a free demo version that's got adverts all over it, but try that out first when you get it. Um, if you're happy with it, then it does cost you £5. Well worth it on the Google Play Store. Get hold of that. Um, really good uh, piece of software. It lets you do recording. Pinch zoom. It even has motion detection in it. Really, really nice on there. Uh, it's a fiver to get that. So like I said, get the demo version. Once you're happy, then pay for the other one, uh, for the full version, the pro version. Um, again, I'll leave links down below for what you need. Um, nice and simple. Um, to do that. So you need your phone to do that. And obviously your phone will have the adapter in here for powering up, which is a mini USB. The next thing you need is you need what's called an OTG. This stands for on the go. And again, I'll leave links on the go um, adapter 
um, for your particular phone. So mine being an Android S6 here has a mini USB on the end of it. So I need a mini USB to USB, uh, which is female. Um, OTG cable. You can get these with USB-C types um, and I believe you can also get them for iPhones as well but again I've not tried an iPhone out of that. They're nice and cheap from Amazon. How much are those? I'm just checking my list here. Um, the OTG cables you're looking at about six quid for one of them. So that's what you need there. The next thing we need to do then is concentrate actually on the camera itself and how do we mount the camera. So to mount the camera, what you need basically is one of these. Um, and you can get these on Amazon. Um, if you get it on Amazon, it's 25 quid. Yeah, that's quite expensive. Basically, it's a plastic coupler uh, with some Jubilee clips on there. You can get them um, uh, in gray, you can get them in black. Um, but however, you can get these cheaper if you go to B&Q. I got this one from B&Q, uh, which is a bargain uh, home, home depot sort of place in the UK. And I got that for nine pounds. So you can save yourself um, a good you know, 14 or so, 15 pounds on that if you go to B&Q. If you're lazy, go to Amazon, get one from there. The next thing you need is what's called an access waste port. Um, and again, I've left a link on Amazon where you can get one of these. Um, it works out about five pound Amazon, but you can go to B&Q again or any Home Depot place and you can get them for a couple of pounds. So um, that's what I've got there. Now, the nice thing about this is that this will unscrew. and You can actually see the camera inside here. So it unscrews like so. Because that's now unscrewed, we can then mount our camera in there. And I'll take some more pictures of this so you can see it on there. But the nice thing here is basically you screw that in like so. This is 40 mils. This is 45 mils. A bit of insulation tape to thicken it all up. And then you can slot that in and it sits in perfectly square like so. A nice good tight fit. You can use the Jubilee clips to tighten it up so it's nice and snug. The same with this side then. This side sits over your scope like so and it's a nice snug fit and again you can use the jubilee clips to tighten it up to get it an even snugger fit you want it so it just pushes and pulls on quite nicely um, and that's how you actually get the camera mounted up onto your actual scope itself so the most important part out of this and the most expensive part is the actual camera itself. Now I built this system up and I'm not about to take it all apart for you but I will go as far as I can with it what I've done is mounted the camera internally in there. And again, I'll leave pictures of the camera for you. Um, hopefully we can see this. Um, you might be able to see the camera in there. What I'm gonna do is unscrew this and just show you how I've done this. Now this is the, the important part, is the camera you need, and there's multiple ways, and again, I will leave you links down in Amazon where you can get them. If you want, you can go searching on eBay, you might find them a little bit cheaper uh, on, on eBay. Uh, but basically, this is an ELP camera, and more importantly, it's USB. So instead of it being analog with the phono type leads, this is USB. This camera, you, if you get it, make sure that it has got the Sony IMV, sorry, the Sony IMX322 sensor in it. That's the sensor and that you need. And it has basically an ability to change lens out. And the lens will screw in and screw out. Now, the way that I've got that in there is basically I've just taken the edges and I've just used a Dremel and just chopped the corners off until I can slot that in as a nice tight fit. What happens then is that camera is nicely tightly fitted in there. It's centralized because it's locked in there. And basically then I can use the attachment, screw it down and that locks it into place even tighter. And obviously don't over tighten it because you don't want to crack the board. If you want, um, you can use a little bit of hot glue and you can hot glue that in there as well if you want. Now the lead fits into the back of the camera. And again, I'll leave some pictures. So all I've done is just dremeled out a hole so that I can put the USB connector in there, a bit of tape and a bit of hot glue so it sticks out of the back of it. And that also helps you with orientation of the camera and setting it all up. So that's the actual camera itself. Now, the camera comes with a lens and it comes with a fisheye lens. And I don't know if you can see this, but um, again, I'll leave some pictures. But the fisheye lens is no good to us at all. Um, we need to change this lens out. Now that lens, quite simply, just unscrews from the housing adapter here. And what you need to do is buy 
a 16mm lens. Now I'm going to leave you a link to the 16mm lens here. Um, now you'll find that that 16mm lens will come with a locking nut on it. When you unscrew the original fisheye lens, and here's the fisheye lens, um, when you unscrew it, this actual um, 12 mil um, 16 mil lens here will not actually be able to obtain focus because you can't get it away further away from the camera. So what I did is I took the locking nut and just super glued it very carefully onto the top of the mount which gave me a few extra millimeters of focus distance so that I could then screw in the 16 mil uh, I could screw in the 16 mil lens and it worked absolutely perfectly. I could get focus with it. However, I will leave you a link also, um, and I'll leave you a picture now for it, of where you can actually change the adapter housing, the plastic part on the camera. Um, you can change it to a bigger one, which will probably work, um, so allow you to use that lens on there. I think that might even come with a lens, but check it out. If it doesn't, it's only gonna cost you an extra couple of quid just to try that out, but I've not tried that myself. So what makes this an IR camera? Well, most cameras have an IR filter that is around the sensor, and you have to somehow get that lens out. Well, the nice thing about this camera is the IR filter, I don't know if we can see that shining there, is actually attached to the back of the lens. So when you take the lens out, you take the IR filter out. Brilliant. That means then all you've got to do is buy the lens, which hasn't got an IR filter, the one that I've linked, and bingo, you've now got an IR less filtered camera. Absolutely brilliant. So all you do, like I said, is you get the camera itself. Um, the camera itself is, let's try and get that into focus for you. The camera itself, are we in focus there? The camera itself is on a square board. Take that square board, just cut diagonal lines across it at the corners, chop the corners off until you get it nice and snug. Do a little bit at a time because you don't want to overcut it. Do a little bit at a time, get that snug in there, either hot glue it in or get it nice and tight. Hole in the back um, so that your lead comes out like so. Um, and that's it, nice and easy. What you then do is you connect up your OTG. So there's our OTG cable connected up and then you connect that into your mobile phone like so and you run the app so let's just run that app and we can see there's the app and now when I move the camera around lo and behold it works fantastic so that's your definite your first test now what I suggest you do is the camera in here is that you change the focus until you get a nice clear picture on your mobile phone and that's the focal length you need and the reason you need this 16 mil lens is because it will match your eye, it sort of mimics your eye at the focal length of your scope. So you know when you put your eye to your scope, you've got to get it at a certain distance called eye relief. Well, this will match your eye and eye relief. So as long as you've got that nicely lined up, so you can see I'm getting nice clear images there. As long as you've got that nicely in focus, that's it. That's the only focusing that you need to do on that actual camera lens itself. Nice and simple like so. So basically that is the setup. Get the camera, replace the lens, which gets rid of the IR, you can see it's shining there, gets rid of the IR filter, replace it with a 12 mil, uh, with a 12, uh, with a, sorry, with a 16 mil lens on there. Um, you may need to use the locking nut to extend the thread out like I did, uh, just to get that extra distance, or you could actually get that adapter that I'm giving you a link to and change that out. Set it all up, test it with the software, make sure it all works. Use the free software to start off with, then spend your five pound and get the pro version of it. Um, and that's it really, that's how it all fits together, like so. So now we can screw the cap on, which is making it nice and tight. We can then drop that into our adapter, like so. And if I now move this camera around, put my mobile phone there, we can see that nicely. Now I'm gonna leave my mobile phone there. We're gonna zoom in. Um, let's just zoom in like so. Now this app is a really good app. There are other apps, but this app works really nice. What I can do on this app is I can come in now and I can actually start to record. I can record, I can take pictures. It's got motion detection. I can change different options on the camera, contrast levels, etc., like so. What's really nice is you can zoom as well and move around. So not only have you got your optical zoom on your camera, but you've also got punch, um, pinch zoom as well, as well as moving around and getting everything nicely centralized. Absolutely brilliant little piece of software, all for about five quid. 
And that is the basis of it now. Because of we no longer have the IR filter, um, where is the camera? Of no, course, we no longer have the IR filter in there. Um, everything now just works brilliantly as a night cam. So the next thing to do is basically to connect it all up. And like we said, it's dead simple. We just get our objective lens like so. Uh, we put it over the end like so. And then we focus up with the camera. Now you will need to, when you've done this, is you will need to change your ocular to get the, um, just keep adjusting this. Look to see that you've got a good sight picture. It will zoom out a bit more here. Make sure that you've got a good picture, slot it on, wiggle it around to get it centralized. If it's not sharp or you can't see the crosshairs, take it off again, change your ocular a little bit more, keep doing that until you've got nice focus on there. It's nicely focused off and then you're ready to plop that onto your actual rifle itself with the phone holder and your IR torch. Obviously your cable then comes along and that plugs into your phone. Now what I do with mine is that I wrap the cable, the excess cable around here and just um, the electrical tape, just put it around there. You can, if you want, you can shorten the cable. It's, if you're any good at soldering with USBs, etc., you can make the cable a lot shorter. That's totally up to you, but nice and easy. So like I said, I'll leave all of the parts lists down below for you to check out. Okay, so um, hopefully that's shown you roughly how I put it all together. It's quite a simple build to do. Now I've worked it out that with minus the torch, with all of the parts, you can do it for about a hundred pounds um, if you go to B&Q for these two plastic bits. If you don't, you want to get it all off Amazon, it's about 120 pound. You might be able to get it cheaper if you search around on eBay and places like that. Of course, you do need to add in the torch and the torch is a preference, but um, again, I'll leave the links for the T20 torch and the rat tail. You don't need the rat tail, but it's really nice, simple solution how to set it all up. Fairly easy to put together. I think the only downside with this is um, you do need to get a Dremel out to a to, uh, to the camera. The camera can be anywhere I've seen anywhere from 45 to 55 pounds, depending where you get them from. So just be careful. And whenever you Dremel, you Dremel the corners off um, off the camera. Just do it little bit by little bit until and keep testing it and keep checking it you know what measure once cut once sort of thing yeah that sort of thing so just be really careful when you do that if you want to super glue the camera in there um, hot glue the camera in there you can do um, I've decided to turn it out the back here you might find a better option for that but it does work really well and I think one of the advantages of this really is that you do have your mobile phone with you you obviously, it doesn't have to be your daily runner mobile phone. I'm sure a lot of you out there have got one of these old smartphones sat in a drawer. Use it, dedicate it to that. Um, it will work in daytime, but obviously there's no IR filter, so whites get blown out massively. I'll leave some video running of me shooting in the daytime with it, and you'll see that the white target that I'm shooting against, it gets blown out completely, and that's because there's no IR filter in there, um, and that sort of like distorts the image on there. This is really for nighttime, and I'm also hopefully leaving you some nighttime footage of this target shooting with this, so you can actually see it. One of the really nice advantages of this as well is that you're not having to have external batteries, you're not having to have an external PVR um, video recorder to record your images. It's all controlled by your smartphone. And of course, this technology is just gonna get better and better with the apps that are on there. You've got all of the pinch, zoom, record, all of that. Even that camera, believe it or not, it's got a microphone in it as well, so it records sound as well, which is quite useful. Motion detections even on that app as well. There are other apps out there that you could potentially use, but I've not personally tried them myself. This one works. So the app is five quid. Certainly worth it to get rid of the annoying, um, annoying adverts on there. Uh, one of the downsides with this is, um, like I said, I always try and give you downsides, but you know, at times it, it's a little bit fiddly at time getting the ocular length sorted out to get it all in focus. And you do have to wiggle this around a little bit, get it in central, get it all set up. It takes you about five minutes to get it all set out. I rec recommend you start off on very low magnification. Um, get it centralized, get it set up, and then dial your magnification up. It's much easier to do that. Obviously, it's as good as the IR torch that you put on it. T20 that I've linked down below will last, will work out to about 100 yards, no problems at all. Um, you can use your mobile phone then to zoom in, zoom out, record, and do all of that. 
So um, hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight. Like I said, I have tried this on Android phones and it works, um, certainly from a Galaxy S6 upwards type phone. I have not tried this on iPhones. Um, feel free to try yourself. Let me know down below um, and see if that works so that other people can gain the knowledge that you've gained from that. But I can't tell you whether or not it works or doesn't work with that at all. Um, but you do need to obviously make sure you get the right OTG cable with the right connector for you. This will not work with any standard cable, it needs to be marked OTG uh, so that the USB will run through your camera. But really cheap, nice and simple. Like I said, you could make one of these up minus a torch for about a hundred pound. Uh, really, really nice. And I've got this, like I said, sat on top of my Red Wolf, uh, Daystate Red Wolf uh, with MTC Cobra first focal plane. It should work on any focal plane, uh, be it second or first focal plane scope, because it is effectively mimicking your eye on that. So is it as good as ATNs? No, of course it's not. It's not as good as those. Um, they've got all built-in unit, dead easy, switch them on, focus, away you go. But not everybody can afford seven, eight hundred pound for an ATN or a photon at three, four hundred pounds. This is a really nice, simple and fairly cheap way of doing it all. At the end of the day, if it doesn't work for you, you can always sell the camera on and probably get your money back on it all like that. So anyway, I hope you like this video. Um, give me the thumbs up, thumbs down, any comments that you've got, please keep them civil as usual, uh, list them down below. Let me know whether or not you're planning on trying this, um, whether or not you've tried it yourself, what do you think of it, uh, any questions, I'll try and answer them. Also go on to our Facebook group, which again, I'll leave the link down below, because on there I will give you, um, we're talking about this, and you can ask any questions and I'll try and answer them for you. I've got lots of reviews coming up, including a brilliant review, hopefully on the Daystate Red Wolf. Uh, uh, that I've got this one on loan, but I'm actually buying my own. But I've got a quick review that I'm going to put on out pretty soon on this for those that are interested in the electronic version on that. Um, and check out these other videos that I'm leaving lying around. Um, fingers crossed it works out for you. Um, it's certainly working for me, and um, uh, I'd love to know how you get on with it. So um, I'll catch you on the next video.